Hi, my name is Petra and I'm the Technical Sales Specialist at Waste Management. Your patients and staff trust you to keep them safe. At Waste Management Technical Services, we see ourselves as a partner in that duty of care. We provide safe, reliable solutions so that you could focus on their welfare. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about infectious waste, what it consists of, the importance of correct segregation at source and correct handling to prevent risks and injuries. So what is actually supposed to go into the yellow bags? Infectious waste is classified as anything that contains a variety of pathogenic microorganisms from bodily fluids and blood. If it is visibly soiled, it should go into the infectious waste bag. However, if the patient is in isolation, everything that has come into contact with the patient must be discarded into the yellow bags as it is potentially infectious. Infectious waste makes up the bulk of the waste stream and is therefore where we experience the most contamination. Contamination happens when different types of waste such as glove boxes, syringe wrappers and paper hand towels are mixed together into the wrong bags. Legislation states that waste must be treated in accordance to its highest risk factor. Therefore, general waste discarded into the yellow bags cannot be removed as it is potentially contaminated and must be treated accordingly. These are photos taken of incorrect waste segregation. You will see there are medical glove boxes which would not have come into contact with the patient placed into the wrong bags. These should not be going into the infectious waste stream it fills up the bins unnecessarily and increases waste disposal costs. This is an example of incorrect segregation during transportation at ward level. Here is a needle found in a yellow bag when it should have been disposed of into the shark's container. All waste must be sealed at three quarters full. Carry the bag away from you to avoid areas of your body coming into contact with the waste bag. Bin liners must be sealed prior to leaving the ward. Movement of waste through patient treatment areas should be avoided or restricted to times when there are less people about. Hazardous waste must not be left unattended in public areas. All bins are supplied with a liner. In order to adhere to the Transportation of Dangerous Goods Act, the waste must be placed into a primary, the bag, and a secondary, the bin, for transportation. Did you know that treating and disposing of medical waste is more expensive than disposing of general waste? In accordance with legislation, medical waste has to undergo treatment to ensure that it's safe before being disposed of at landfill. All the medical waste we collect, including sharps, infectious and anatomical waste, is treated in our rotoclave, which is an autoclave with a rotating drum on the inside that breaks up the waste. This ensures that the waste is sterilized throughout before being disposed of correctly in accordance with our permit conditions. Thank you for your time. If you have any further questions regarding the treatment and disposal processes in this video, please contact us.